Halle Bailey and DDG call it quits less than one year after welcoming their son. How is motherhood and fatherhood treating you? It's wonderful. I love our baby so much. We're so happy. It's amazing. DDG, born Daryl Dwayne Granberry Jr., announced the news on his Instagram stories Thursday, saying the split comes after much reflection and heartfelt conversations. Adding, the decision was not easy, but we believe it's the best path forward for both of us. I cherish the time we've spent together and the love we shared. Despite the changes in our relationship, our love for each other remains deep and true. We are still best friends and adore each other. Hallie and DDG were first romantically linked in January 2022 and welcomed their son Halo in 2023. You gotta make sure you, you be, be nice to the director and the producer so you can get some minutes too, okay? Oh, no. <gasps> oh my God. Is it okay? We've always wanted children. Like, we're young people, but you know when you just feel like when you're young, you're like, I know my life purpose. One of my life purposes is to be a parent. I've always felt that way since I was little. And he's also one of those people. So it's like, it's really special. When it comes to Halo, the 26-year-old rapper says he and the Little Mermaid star will focus on our individual journeys and our roles as co-parents. We cherish the bond we've built and the beautiful moments we've shared before ending his post by asking for understanding and support as they navigate this transition. Juicy! Masculine instincts kicked in the moment I seen a cherry. Juicy J was just rapping. And then I look over, I see a cherry instantly. Now, a lot of people were saying Hallie had her mouth open. I didn't see that part. I don't think she had her mouth open at all. You can see she's laughing. That's why her mouth was open. Look. She's still laughing. But I think that's because she was laughing. If you open your mouth to eat something, you're not finna have your teeth like that. You don't eat nothing like that. Her mouth, she was laughing, y'all. That's a laugh. You see how her mouth open? That's how your mouth's supposed to be open if you're trying to get a cherry. Hallie teeth was showing. So she wasn't opening her mouth for no cherry. See, watch when I feed it the cherry. Juicy! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Nerd Chronicles with your host, Christian Paul Speaking. And finally, it's been so good to be back after a few weeks. I'm um, basically going on vacation and doing some errands, basically with helping out family, with work, and everything else. It really feels so good to be back, y'all. I've been literally just basically like building up content, recording content for a bit when it comes to my vacation. And in addition to that, there's literally been like so much news literally going on all across the streets. So much craziness, so much sauciness, so much juiciness, you know, so much chaos coming by. It's literally so much too fast to literally pick up. In addition to that, you know, there's literally so much new problems when it comes to the data world. <laughs> when it comes to AI and deep learning that I'm currently working on right now that I'm also looking forward to present as well. So literally a lot of stuff that's actually mainly coming down the pipe. How long that's going to take, I personally don't know. I'll do the best I can to make sure I get everything done, hopefully by the end of the month at the time of this recording. But man, that vacation was literally much needed. I definitely needed that. I should get myself. <laughs> Excuse me. A huge, huge reset. Um, so, with that, around the time that... 
I came, um, I'm, I was about to actually head back home on a flight back to New York City. Um, basically, I was actually going through some relationship stuff with um, some celebrity breakups when it came with um, DDG and Hallie, um, Hallie Bailey. No, the star from The Little Mermaid, right? And I know there's like a lot behind the scenes on like why they're no longer together. Yes, also take notes that um, I also want to actually want to bring up something as well that they do share a newborn. They do share a one year old together. Um, I believe DDG is currently 27 and Hallie is 24. I know Hallie's really raised by like a stable household with like loving parents, married parents, as well as other siblings as well. DDG's personal life, we are not fully sure. And again, we don't really thoroughly know what went on based on the videos that I saw. It's just basically speculation with the whole Usher thing and Hallie and everything else. Yes, you guys, you get get all the fruits and cherries and everything else, but there may be like a lot more to it other than those things. Because, yeah, you can actually accept the cherry and all that stuff, and they may have some stuff. We don't know if there's any other internal issues between the two. And maybe immaturity, we don't know. But one thing that I really don't like is when people, other people actually trying to utilize a story like this just to actually utilize the narrative or utilize the agenda that they're mainly trying to push, which I will mainly be, mainly be discussing on later on in this video. But before I do, I want to try and discuss a quick, quick clip um, when it came with DDG and the whole relationship stuff that actually mainly came about, um, mainly on what he stated up in one of his earlier podcasts. I don't know if he's a guest or he hosts one, but I want to try and actually point something that he has mainly stated. Let's get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, we have um, a clip on DDG actually speaking um, post relationship, post breakup. Of Hallie and basically on how he's single and actually giving relationship advice. Let's take a moment and actually digging into that clip, shall we? Here we go. Yeah. And if I can tell myself something at age 22, I would tell myself not to get in a relationship because it's mm. damn near like having a part time job, bro. Yeah. You really have right. to apply a lot of time. And it's true. Um, relationships and marriages are part-time jobs. It basically requires a level of emotional intelligence for you to have. Your emotional intelligence needs to be very high. You need to have some wisdom just to be in a little serious relationship um, or at the, at the most, even a marriage, right? So it is a full-time job literally in itself. The challenge is make sure you actually do a good balance between the relationship as well as the job. Um, let's continue what DG has Time to say. And effort, like you might be doing videos all day, and your girl get an attitude when you're doing your last <laughs> yeah. video. Like, when you gonna take me out to eat? Yeah. When you gonna take me to the movies? When we gonna go on a date? And then it causes relationship problems in your real life that can affect your content. And this normally happens when you're actually doing the relationship when you're young. Um, let me fix my microphone real quick. When you enter a relationship when you're young, um, basically like male or female, um, basically a lot of times the women, you know, they would actually tend to actually be a little impatient when it comes, hey, why am I not being taken out and everything? Uh, why are we going to the movies? Why are we spending time together? You know, it, 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 it could happen to literally women at any age, but if like the woman is younger and she's not fully mature enough, these things can actually occur more so often. But if she's actually of age, if she's approaching like, you know, probably more mature age, past 25, 30, 40s, 50s, they could be a bit more understanding. But still, you need to find that balance between actually going hardcore with your work and definitely spending time with your lady as well. You might get mad in the argument. You might not yeah. want to film the next day. You might not want to stream the next day. You might not want to go to the studio. And it all comes back to emotional intelligence at the end of the day. The next day whatever like yeah so i would tell myself if i was 22 i would say bro just grind it out let a relationship happen yeah but only happen when you feel comfortable in yourself as a man like yeah. it's best for you to be single in these years of your life so you can really grind yeah you know it ain't ain't nobody going nowhere bella ain't going nowhere where brooklyn ain't going nowhere. whatever you know whoever you like in this moment um but 
get your ducks in a row first and grind and, and, and not have no restriction. It's real restrictions when you're in a relationship. Yeah, it's like definitely. you got to always consider their feelings. Yeah. So it's like you can't really. Yep, that's basically how a relationship works. They got, you got to consider their feelings and they got to consider yours as well. Two-way street. That's how a relationship works. You work how you want to work. Yeah. All right. Um, what I'll say in this case, what I will say in his case, at least um, DDD is definitely maturing. Now, again, I don't thoroughly know um, about their situation or what led to their breakup with DDG, with Hallie and how they broke up. We don't thoroughly know for sure until the facts actually ex expose themselves and they play themselves out literally over time. Now, I get the whole thing with the terrorist scenario and everything like that. There's definitely some, some women that actually want the artists actually caress them in some way or actually hold them when it comes to photos and if you see women actually doing that way, that's a definitely a huge cause for concern. Um, the whole eating the cherry from Usher and everything else, I could be a little bit suspect with that, but it's always best to actually thorough make sure there's confirmation involved between the two so that you definitely know for sure. You know, I'll say definitely say this before I go with the whole agendas with, you know, the pseudo red pill and the pseudo feminists. I would like to wish um, DDG, ha Hallie, and Halo all the best in their co-parenting. I know being, being, raising, being a single parent, actually raising is actually very, very difficult as it is. Even though, you know, DDG and Hallie may have the finances to actually ease the process a bit, it still doesn't fully replace two parents up in the household the majority of the time. And that's the unfortunate part about all that stuff that actually mainly came about. And the worst part is you break up when the newborn's actually here. So there's a lot of questions that need to be asked in regards to that. But I've, I've seen friends of mine, I've seen family members of mine that are in there persistently right now. They don't have as much of the finances that DDG or Hallie has just to put their kid up in the better light. And they got to be dealing with co-parenting and visiting everything else. So I can empathize and relate to what DDG and Hallie are definitely going through in that moment and I do wish all three of them the best all right well ladies and gentlemen meet Sue Alpha Guru Myron Gaines of the Fresh and Fit podcast that actually spoke in regards to the DDDG situation and according to him you know homeboy DDG is hardcore simping so let's dig fully up into the video and actually try to dig into myron's brain as to why he reacted the way that he did okay let's uh, okay all right how much you want to bet did he speak on relationship stop and growth how much do y'all want to bet he's going to take all the blame he's not going to talk at all about his girl being famous he's not going to talk at all about his girl being uh, Nigga Mermaid. Yeah, because all that stuff is irrelevant to the post that he's actually discussing. It's irrelevant. He's not going to talk at all about her <laughs> being a celebrity. And he's just going to say, oh, yeah, again, a relationship when you're young is, is, is fucked up. Yeah, because it requires a lot of emotional intelligence in order to withstand that relationship on both parties in order for that relationship to survive. Without that, you know, the relationship is shot. He ain't gonna, he, he's not going to say shit about her being a thot. How much y'all want to bet? Let's go. Now, that part, we don't fully know for sure. They're not going to actually fully tell you. I think the thought mainly as he came from the Yester concert, we don't know. All that stuck is stuff is spe speculation. And if I can tell myself something at age 22, I would tell myself not to get in a relationship because it's damn near like having a part-time job, bro. Yeah. You really have to apply a lot of time and effort like you might be doing videos all day and your girl get an attitude when you're doing your last video like nigga when you gonna take me out to eat yeah when you gonna take me to the movies when we gonna go on a date and then it causes relationship problems in your real life 
that can affect your content. You might get mad in the argument. You might not yeah. want to film the next day. You might not want to stream the next day. You might not want to go to the studio the next day. Whatever, like. Yeah. So I would tell myself if I was 22, I would say, bro, just grind it out. Let a relationship happen. Yeah. But only happen when you feel comfortable in yourself as a man. Like, yeah. I feel like you shouldn't get in a relationship, a relationship until you feel like a nigga can't DM your girl and take your girl. All right. What I'll say in a situation like this, you want to try and catch something like that? Lead by example. You know, set the tone. Do the best you can as you try to elevate your life on all angles. And, you know, in many cases, like women will definitely respect you for that. But there will be a few women that will not. There are going to be some women that are actually definitely narcissistic or definitely literally fully intimidated by your growth and by your burns and actually doing better for yourself. And these are the types of women that you need to avoid. And if they do decide to ghost you and block you, you literally dodge the bullets, you know, be grateful, be thoughtful, be grateful um, be blessed that God got, got detoured you away from the chaos that could have actually gotten worse had you stayed. You know what I'm saying? If you're really too concerned about another dude or another that you're literally trying to steal your girl just because he got higher status or just because he got more money or a little bit more everything, realistically, there's always going to be some, there's always going to be someone that's going to be better than you, have more money than you, going to be more fly to you. You know what I'm saying? Within every single angle, you do the best you can. But if you worry about actually being comparing yourself to some other dudes that's actually going to come by, you are maybe going to lose every time. And if your girl chooses to lose while you're secure with yourself doing the best that you can, and she's still not satisfied that she's going to want to sleep with him, let him. Because it's a reflection of who that woman is at the end of the day. Like, if you feel like it's a nigga out there that's more lit than you, more, like, stable than you that can take your girl, yeah. then you ain't working hard enough. Let the girl walk. Definitely still improve, but let the girl walk. Because at the end of the day, it shows a reflection of who she really is on how materialistic she truly is at the end of the day. Not focused on caring more and worried about material stuff, mainly at the end of the day. You know, not really focusing on the character of a man and like who you are, what you build and everything else. More so focused on all the material stuff than anything else. Those are the types of women that you need to avoid. And bless God, you know, that you dodge the bullet. Yeah. All right. I knew he was going to give that politically correct answer. Look, the real reason it failed, right? He's right. Getting married young, uh, getting in a relationship young is stupid. Stupid as fuck. So I tell you guys, 35 years old, right? But yet, Myron, you're still in a relationship, Lily, under 35, um, allegedly with your Hispanic girlfriend that came by. But we don't want to actually go, actually go through that. You're literally in a relationship like under 35 years old in 2024 with a girlfriend literally up in Miami. So you're already contradicting your statement mainly right there. But this is a suggestion. So I tell y'all, right? Also, what he doesn't want to admit, but I already know it, is that he got with a woman that has more status than him. And then again, like, why would you have to worry about, like, some woman that's going to have, like, more stats and everything else rather than actually focus on utilizing both of your stats and mainly build together and focusing on the character? If y'all mainly focusing more on materialistic stuff and, like, who's really hot and who's really not and doing, like, a head to head master we're actually trying to compete with one another rather than actually working together is going to be a problem and it's literally going to derail your relationship over time. And probably she might have more money than him, too. Child, I don't know about that. She might have more money than him. I think she might. She, she a movie star and shit. And also, he's a musician and a YouTuber. Both of them are you have used YouTube to actually catapult to fame. And both DZ and Haley are millionaires. So, like. And mind you, a similar situation with Lisa that actually is actually working so far successfully. Simone Biles and Jonathan Owens. Simone has way more status than Jonathan Owens for sure. And may have like more net worth than he does also. You know, with the income they have, you know, sponsorship deals within hotels and other like other brands that he has. Plus with the national shirt that she's actually doing, you know, way more status, you know, definitely way more money than Jonathan Owens. And yes, John Jonathan Owens is starting role play up in the NFL with the Chicago Bears, earning his take. 
but yet they're still together. Yet they're still happy. Yet Simone's allowing, you know, Jonathan Owens to actually take the lead because Jonathan Owens mainly leads by example. And they're living very, very comfortably behind the scenes, living their lives up in private, actually having a calm time. And they're still together today. And here's the thing too, right? He, I like how he says, he speaks on relationships stopping your growth. If y'all remember, when he came on our podcast, I'm going to be honest with y'all, bro. He was dry as fuck. He didn't say nothing. He didn't say shit. This island says, DDG, I'm going to need you to do your real voice for the remainder of the show. <laughs> Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was wondering. Wait, 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 wait. Like, What's going on? Is that, a, is that real? Yeah. Are you joking? Nah, it's real. For real. <laughs> I, just, I just don't use that motherfucker because... See niggas laughing at me and shit. I like to keep my shit. Like, I, this is more. This is more like. This is more. Um. Yo. How you say it? Commercial. Commercial. Yeah. Like I can make music with this voice, but like, say I want to talk to a girl or some shit, and you know, girls like deep voices. Hey, bitch. Yeah. Like <laughs> wait, wait, hold on. Come so, bitch. for example, let's say you meet a girl, right? This is hypothetical. Yeah. And you call her on the phone. But which voice do you actually use? I don't use I don't use my a deep voice because I use I use like this voice because mm-hmm. it's more commercial like that's what they know yeah like oh, I don't true. want people to know about my real voice damn you feel me I like to keep my shit how it is <laughs> yeah, that's crazy <laughs> wait hold on hold on <laughs> let me get this straight so your mom right knows you very well yeah but she like hey son just use your real voice she's like you know what match that shit up nigga yeah nah I I talk to my mom in my real voice damn but like. When I'm outside and shit, I got so used to using this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even use the, my my real voice for it. I just use this motherfucker. So you know, yo, bro, it's like it's, a superpower. Would you, so it's, it's like, like you right right damn near sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, what the hell? Would you ever make a song in that voice? Nah, nah, nah. Okay, okay. Well, you did at the beginning of your song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made by Curtis? Yeah, yep. Maybe yeah, Maybe by Curtis. He used it really that voice. song too, bro. Yeah. Yo, how much music do you got? I wanted to ask that earlier. Like, how much music do you got where you're, like, able to put out a song every week? Archives. I got, like, 300 unreleased songs. Damn. Damn. But what happens is, like, for some reason, I, f- I forget that it's only old to me. You know what I mean? Like, I got so many old songs, features and shit, and I'm like, this shit old, like. You know, I'm on a whole different vibe now, but it's, you know, fuck around. I probably got a hit in my notes and I don't even know. Bro, send them my way. I'll play them in the car, bro. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Lolo. <laughs> All right. Uh, where we at? Um, in- Y'all want to know why? Because his girl runs the show. I just call it like I see it, bro. His girl. And also, mind you, they got PR farms really actually trying to maintain and actually clean the images as well. To make sure they mainly don't even go that extreme, number one. And number two, to make sure they protect themselves from little, little lawsuits mainly up ahead. This is literally trying to maintain not only his image, but also his girl's image. That's what public relations is mainly for. When actually stuff really mainly gets out of line, even though it's too honest. And a lot of public actually gets spooked by it. Public relations is actually mainly there to clean it up. I know about this stuff because I actually uh, was actually learning about a course on public relations when it comes to social media girl runs the shit so he can't be on no podcast talking crazy she's trying to get a list role she's trying to be in movies and shit like that he can't be on a podcast say oh yeah these stupid bitches blah, blah. but also no one can literally be on a podcast literally trying to act an ass or literally try to act the fool especially on social media because otherwise it could really risk actually losing all that stuff that mainly had they have gone by so it's not literally a woman thing it's mainly an anybody thing especially when you're literally coming up high up in the mainstream or especially when you're actually looking for brand deals um, or anything else when it comes to brand deals, when it comes to YouTube, you really have to actually be very careful on how you present your image and you have to try your best to mainly be as professional as possible. You know, not even actually being too profane and everything else, not be calling people bitches, sluts, whores, or anything else. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have like huge problems. You're going to lose shots at actually getting hardcore brand deals to really boost your revenue and also boost your network. You'll blow those opportunities away, blow them out of the water. Ah, can't do the it. The bad way. Can't do it. Right? So. Yeah, see, they're saying she up there with more money and more status. Yeah. So, like, when you're dating a chick that's more lit than you, right? And you're young. Comparison. That's like a double whammy. Because remember that boxing analogy I gave y'all before? 
You coming with the Louis Vuitton? She coming with the Louis Vuitton? Okay, nigga. Now you're coming with the Louis Vuitton thinking you're late. She's coming in with spike gloves. Because she got just as much money, if not more than you. Going on and seeing. Right? And she got like a, a double. So she fuck you up a little bit. And then that double coming, he fuck you up a little bit. It's basically two on one. Because she got more money and more status than you. And keep in mind, she's dealt with more niggas than you've dealt with bitches. Now that part, you really, 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 really do not know for sure. And notice, they actually running that same red that they mainly have when it comes to the whole hardcore red pill, the pseudo red pill they mainly talk about. All uh, women deal with like when women have like more, more nuts count than men running like the same age that they have. Virtually, the majority of women has like a higher nuts count than dudes, just because they got like dudes flying around and everything else. Mainly dealing with like a narrative. Y'all, y'all know, y'all know said there that they mainly pop out. It's just facts, bro. Average women have had more men or more access to men than top tier men. Now, top tier men, what one woman may define as top tier may be different than another woman. So it's not fully all on the same. There's no one size fits all when it comes to that type of act, act when, I, when it comes to that type of aspect on how each woman defines like what their version of a top tier man really is. It's not the same definition when they minds, you know. Their version of a top tier man may be like great character. One may be like having more stats, having more money. Another's may be like high charm. It could vary from woman to woman to woman. It may be somebody within their same race. It could vary from woman to woman. It is not a one size fits all thing. When a motherfucker's gonna get this in their mind? That doesn't mean that she fucked all. Uh. What I'm saying is, there's been more men that have made approaches at her and come to her, and she's dealt with more men than you've dealt with bitches. Matter of fact, bro. But we don't even know if VDD actually dealt with more bitches than that, or more, dealt with more. Excuse me, dealt with more women than around that time. We don't know. She's she's turned down more dudes than bitches you've talked to. Yeah, that's an assumption that he makes. This is just facts, man. This is just facts. When you actually look at the numbers and you crunch how much attention women get, especially a girl like that, that's a fucking slap, bro. You're never going to win. But I want to ask mine, where does he get all those statistics for given that knowledge that he mainly has with all the attention that they mainly have, right? Has he gotten it from like every single dating site that he have up in this in the lot? And more, mind you, each day you had their own algorithms when it actually comes to like matches and everything else. So has he done all this thorough research between every single dating site that he mainly has and done like a whole heat map winning the whole area of the Florida area and also nationwide? A thorough detailed heat map based on the mindset of people overall. Because that's something that he has is not compared literally to the whole nation. And it can literally be wishy-washy. She got more money than you. She got more status than you. She got more experience than you. It's a rap, nigga. This is, this is the type of bitch. He got in a relationship with her. She made him sign an NDA. Let's fucking go. Again, we do not know the details of what has been going on behind the scenes between DDG and Hallie. This is all assumptions actually trying to mainly form their agenda and mainly push their narrative. Just, the, just like what Myron's doing when it comes to that red pill. How do you know that for sure, Myron? Have you spoken with DDG behind the scenes in regards to your breakup? Have you spoken with DDG post the Halle Brown, post their breakup? Have you spoken with them about the situation that he's gone into further detail as to what's really gone going on since you guys have done an interview with him? Dumb, dumb, monko, monko, dumb, monko. Because I hadn't really heard uh, Myron say personally that I've spoken with DZ personally. I've been close with him since the breakup. I've been asking him how he's doing and everything else. All these doing is you had to a video. She made that nigga sign some type of monetary agreement. Did you confirm with DDG on that? That's the question. Dumb, dumb, monko, monko, monko. Never, ever, ever. Get with a bitch that makes more money than you or has more status than you or is more lit than oh, you. You're basically God. getting into a boxing. So basically what I'm trying to actually get with a woman that's actually less status, actually more naive, so I can actually try to corn in the game. But 
it doesn't matter if a woman is low status or high status, whatever it is, as long as that woman is high care, literally have high character and not narcissistic. You know what I mean? As long as that woman has mainly high emotional intelligence, which we're the key in this, you're fine. But if her emotional intelligence is very low, if she's actually the losing one when it comes to if, have you buy for everything and y'all just literally met, you know, you're dealing with a recipe for disaster. When you focus, well, when you focus on actually teaching women that actually have material stuff or material shit, and you focus focus on the materialistic things, you're really gonna be ending up with rats. And I guarantee you that. And de designing your own death, bro. Ninety nine percent of guys can't do it. Are there some guys out there that could do it? For sure. But most niggas simply can't do it. This dude got this. Yeah, that's pseudoscience, man. It's a fucking rap, bro. It's a rap. Cooked. Cooked. Absolutely cooked, bro. No chance. Visit man type shit. No chance. Right? No chance, bro. No. Fuck no. Fuck no. Y'all want to know how I knew his girl controlled him? When he was at the studio, he was like real big on like saying, oh yeah, no, nah, I don't agree with them. These are my opinions. He's on the phone with her and shit. I was like, bro, this nigga, this nigga, this nigga's own, man. This bitch owns this nigga's life. Right? So, look, man, it is what it is, man. If she truly actually owned DDG's life, man, you know, DDG wouldn't be literally talking about the whole thing right now. He wouldn't be talking to having having a YouTube channel. She literally be controlling DDG's literally every move. But she let him have the freedom to literally do whatever he wants to do. And unfortunately, they had a little breakup going on and all that stuff. Y'all saw the video they made gone on with Usher and DG Lily snatched that cherry from Usher's hand. And he was the one that actually gave the cherry and put it in Haley's mouth. Mind you. Okay. So it's not that they, Haley owns DG or DG owns Haley. What, what really is the whole ordeal is that, you know, both of them are literally young adults literally making their own decisions. And unfortunately, the relationship did not work out from what we know at the very least. Now, more detail will be coming out soon, later on. But as of now, we do not know. Oh, he was a stay-at-home dad? Oh, I didn't know that. But yet, the stay-at-home dad is really making millions of dollars upon YouTube. With no problem. He's not the montage yet. She had him as a stay-at-home dad? Oh, shit. I didn't know that, bro. Damn, I didn't know that. But I'm not surprised, bro. I don't even need to know that to know that he was done. <laughs> like, bro, like, like, come on, man. He cooked. Absolutely cooked. Cooked, man. So, hey, look. Fresh likes DDG, they get along and shit like that. I don't have a problem with the guy, but like I knew right away, I was like, bro, this 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 nigga girl control him. This nigga girl control him. Like he he didn't want to talk about no other bitches. He didn't want to look at no other girls. He didn't really want to fuck with any of the other. Because that's his right. Because he's trying to stay low in the relationship. That's what you're supposed to do. Girls, I was like, man, this 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 nigga girl. You you trying to expect DDG to actually look at other women and come by while they're in a serious relationship together? You trying to focus on DDG mainly having side hoes? That's what you're doing, Myron. While he's really being on a full-fledged committed relationship at the time. Control that. This nigga cooked. But yet, this stay-at-home dad is currently making way more millions of dollars than you can. With multiple channels full of millions upon millions of subscribers. Multiple channels with millions upon millions of subscribers. Millions upon millions of dollars. Way more money than you can ever make Myron Gaines and Fresh Prince CEO. Juicy. So who are you actually trying to talk and actually put this man down just because they had like a basically had a shortcoming in the relationship or he's now single, right? Who do you actually tell? Who will you actually tell this man that? Hey, you know what's funny? I told Fresh behind the scenes. I said, yo, I promise you they're not going to last. I fucking told him this shit. He might not admit it on camera, but I told him, I was like, Fresh, this shit is never going to last. This nigga's cooked. And look, here we go. I don't miss. Yeah, if you're on the narrative. I know modern women better than they know themselves. I am a, I, I am a, a modern woman connoisseur, bro. <laughs> God, this I can dude, look at the dude. This fool. See how he moves? Then look at the girl. See oh, how she moves? God. And I'll tell you exactly. 
And the homeboy been bombing on dates behind the scenes, mind you. Homeboy been bombing on fucking cold approaches, and he say he know when we get the fuck out of here. What's going on in that relationship, bro? I'll oh tell you exactly my what god! It was. This nigga was worried as fuck, man, for his girl. So I was like, yes, yeah, she the boss, she the boss, she the boss, and it's never gonna work when she's the boss. It's never gonna fucking work. This girl right here, here I move my face out the way. This girl right here, bro, she cooks. She a single mom now. She a single mom. Her baby daddy's a former rapper, and she a list celebrity, whatever actress, whatever she cook. She ain't gonna find a nigga either. Actually, I defer on that. If both of them definitely mature, if both of them as he actually get themselves right, and actually get themselves correct, and actually lead by example for their children, and know how to co-parent, actually try to keep themselves out of it, and they do find like other serious couples at all, as long as they both mature, it's definitely possible. They just have to be actually more practical in their strategies. It will be harder for sure. Exponentially harder. But you can definitely find other single parents that actually uh, can actually fill up their needs as well. Or maybe other people that maybe actually be open with actually just um, looking up at the child as long as they actually have a good bonding with the child. Which is really the most important. And that child actually cool with, you know, that new date. Why not? It can still happen. It just will not. It just will be a lot harder. She'll she'll never. She won't be able to respect dudes. It's a wrap, man. Man, the Mets getting cooked by the Dodgers. I was actually watching the game three of the World Series right now. Pardon me, a two run homer. Holy, you know what? Don't see it very well. Real live wire, too. Real firecracker down there. <laughs> You're no never going to know. He could have won the lotto today, or he could have uh, given up a home run. There's no difference between his emotions. He loved that, though. The pressure cooker of the postseason. Mookie Bennett sends a high fly ball to deep left field. Nimmo's going back at the wall. It's gone. Mookie Betts goes deep. The Dodgers have broken it open. Again. And a day after the unsung heroes chip in, it's the superstars at the top of the order. Otani and Betts both going deep, reaching in seven of their eight times up. Single, double, and now home run for Mookie Betts, his third one of October. Mookie is a special player. Yeah, the headlines get taken by Otani, and for good reason, but we got Mookie Betts. A oh, shit. Oh, shit. God damn. Pardon me if you mean to strike the ladies and gentlemen, but continuing on with, you know, pseudo alpha guru, you know, classic gay man, Myron Gaines here. Notice he's actually you trying see? to formulate a narrative just because of actually what went down, actually trying to sit with the pseudo red pill set that he's been preaching. He's repeating almost every single day. While well, he still lacks experience, actually had a further tool and improve on his game. Actually improve on meeting women, improve on strengthening his relationship with his girl. Um, uh, me with his girl back in Miami and everything else, you know. I, I don't know what's really going on behind the scenes, you know. He try to force feed a narrative based on material stuff. Material shit, it we will not last. And that's the type of stuff that really does disgust me. Now, I want to actually try and deal with the other side of the coin when dealing with the pseudo feminists when it actually came with that type of ordeal on how what their take on that particular relationship mainly is when in between when it comes with DDG and Haley. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, now we have the pseudo feminist side of the story due to the fact and their speculation and their reason why DDG and Haley mainly broke up. And they're going to primarily blame all of this on DDG, not knowing thoroughly behind the scenes of what really went down, when we went down, and, you know, like Fresh and Fit, 
they're going to focus mainly on social status, on which person, one person having the higher social status, the other, and, you know, they're going to be lame. So if I did low social status, that's why they didn't work out. All this sort of rhetoric is like, it's like they have the same mindset on the opposite side of the coin. So let's see what this YouTuber Chrissy has to say in regards to all of this. Give a quick reminder to women about the importance of reputation. And in this video, I'll be using DDG and Halle Bailey as an example. As many of you know, DDG recently announced their breakup on Instagram and people are saying. Very, 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 very unfortunate. As, as I said again, it's very unfortunate. And it's a prank and DDG often does pranks like this. But even if it's a prank, which I don't think it is, but even if it is, that just shows his lack of respect and lack of regard for Hallie. Because why would you play like that? And I know he's young, both he and Hallie are young, but sir, you have a child now. It's time to be a man and stop acting like a little boy doing these pranks. And the entire duration of this relationship, DDG has been embarrassing Hallie. He's been oversharing, talking too much, yeah, but the question is, how do you know? Have you actually been speaking with Hallie behind the scenes? Do you know Hallie in person actually make that type of statement? You know what I mean? Because you can see all this stuff in the public eye, but have you seen all like the stuff with the relationship behind the scenes? Doing all that deep turmoil that you mainly claim to have, right? Have you been literally up in there behind the scenes? Have you had close friends that actually saw the relationship and all these things for actually for you and for you to actually have that type of assessment? That's why I want to that's why I want to ask Chrissy on publicly about her in general. He's been doing way too much in my opinion. And just mm. remember ladies, when a man is not on your level socially or financially, <sighs> in this case DDG, he's not broke, but he's also not on Hallie's level socially. So And again, it's the same situation I to basically discuss with with um Jonathan Owens and Simone Biles. Jonathan Owens does not have the same level of money or fame that Simone Biles has. Or even like the high level um, social status credit that Simone Biles had, has. But they are currently finding out a way to actually build together. And he's still entrenched in trust in this young man due to the fact they have like great chemistry together. And they're married. And they work well together and they live in life in their own terms. Let them be. Let them do what works for them. It's not a one size fits all thing. Just because you got like one person having like a high social status and the other doesn't mean that they're going to have like some failures and it's going to literally deteriorate when you have somebody the opposite sex come by having high social status and you, and you got to be focused on the hypergamy train. When you try to focus more on the hypergamy train based on materialistic stuff, you know, you're showing yourself to actually be very, very, very shallow. But hey, I'm not actually going to try and take that way. If you want to actually go and take that path, that's your right. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to emotional intelligence when it's all said and done. When that is the case, they have a lot less to lose. So they're not going to be concerned with protecting your image, especially if there's some underlying jealousy. It's not even all about social status. Again, this all comes back to emotional intelligence, irrespective of social status, irrespective of wealth, because there's a bunch of people that actually do have a higher social status and high amounts of wealth. But yet they have very silly emotional intelligence. Go ask Puffy. Go ask Diddy. Go ask Amber Heard. Especially when it comes to your social life mainly behind the scenes. Of your success, which I suspect is there with DDG as it pertains to Hallie. That's why he keeps blabbing and running his mouth about Hallie on these podcasts and Hallie is staying quiet. It's not an equal relationship dynamic. They're not equal socially. And DDG knows that. And when men know that... You and just because they're not equal socially doesn't mean they can't work in unison. Just because they're not equal and based on social status and who's more famous than the other, that does not mean that they cannot work in unison. You can be easily be social, equally with social status and everything and trying to do like the whole company like him versus her. And there's some cases where they have equal social status and it does work out. And there are other cases where some folks, some um, couples are of equal social status as well. And they have like internal class behind the scenes and the relationship starts deteriorating due to the fact they have a very shitty foundation. You're too good for them or they know 
other people think you're too good for them and they know they have less to lose than you do. They are extremely careless and in many cases they'll attempt to bring your image, your reputation, and your social status down. Oh years. God. And this is not to say Fucking that Holly rhetoric. is perfect at all. She definitely embodies the good girl archetype and she mm. benefits from the halo effect. And I think we the public project our quote unquote good girl expectations onto her. And that's because of how she's been marked. Because y'all been trying to emulate her to so what you want to do to be. I want to literally live vicariously through her. While in fact, she's a human. Basically, has a private life of her own. And she's human just like everybody else. She got a life too. Why should we worry about what celebrities are doing right and if actually focusing on ourselves? But every good girl usually has a bad side. And for her to even be dealing with an archetypical bad boy like DDG, it just shows that some part of her is similar to him, even if we don't see it. So it's not about Hallie being better than DDG per se. It's more so about what they... But yet, you're claiming that Hallie has like better social status and higher social status than DDG, even though she's not better overall, though. But yeah, you're saying just because you got a guy with low social status, that mean, that means they got I'm I'm making the real your life. Just because they got like a low social status, that means they got lower emotional intelligence. That's not fully true in all cases. That's not fully true. Both represent, and also how pristine Hallie's reputation was before having DDG's baby. And in another live stream, I talked about how. how but hey, man, Hallie basically trying to take the Juno route. Hey. Nice legs. Leaker decided he didn't want to see the baby. Neither did I, really, and he didn't feel like ours. I think he was always hers. Would you like to meet your son? with a chair. Y'all playing the whole baby actually getting yourself literally knocked up without the ring. That's on you. But, you know, like those hormones coming in, you know, trying to make it so you literally feel like Juno. Hey, man, you know, y'all got to live with that. Y'all got to live with the whole cold pain stuff for the rest of your life. Ali could possibly flip that to her advantage and kind of go the good girl gone bad Rihanna route. I think that could definitely work for her if she had some really good music and good movie roles. But I think all of this just happened at the wrong time because she was still on the Little Mermaid wave. And for those of you who are going to be in the comment section talking about, oh, what other people think doesn't matter. Listen, if. Yeah, you damn right it don't matter when it comes to your personal relationships. 
maybe it comes to personal being, I get perceptions, everything in some cases, but whatever y'all do mainly behind the scenes and everything else is not our business. Why should we care? You know what I mean? Whatever happens in the house, we could definitely learn from what really goes on, what mistakes that they have, and definitely look at the AIDS. But it's not a one size fits all thing. You don't care about reputation, then obviously this video isn't for you. This is for the women who do care about that. And like it or not, in our society. In order to actually protect your reputation and image, you have to be with people that actually higher emotional intelligence, irrespective of social status. Once you get somebody that's of high emotional intelligence and is not as socially awkward or literally not as like socially demeaning or anything like that, not as the most socially arrogant or belittling. If you have somebody that's actually highly mature and of high emotional intelligence and y'all build on stuff together and y'all learn to communicate well, the sky can that can definitely be the sky's definitely the limit whatever y'all can well y'all two can do together. As long as y'all build together based on that strong foundation. <laughs> Excuse me. Reputation matters to most people, especially. Correct. Which is why you need to be with somebody that's of good character, who's very mature, and also has a high emotional intelligence. It's not about social status. It's not about fame. It's not about, oh, you got this high social status in you. You got that high wealth. It's about character. It's about maturity. It's about emotional intelligence. Especially if they are trying to move up in their career or move up in class. It's not all. Again, states back to emotional intelligence and maturity. All that matters. And I definitely think Hallie can bounce back from this, but it does matter. And it's part of why in the beginning, Hallie was hiding her pregnancy. She knew it was a bad look and she didn't want to face the hit to her reputation and the potential social consequences. Yeah, speculation. She was still heavily riding off of the Little Mermaid wave and being super kid friendly. And that imagery and representation just does not mix with being a single mother, especially to a man like DDG. And for a long time, DDG has felt like he had to prove himself worthy of Hallie because of her reputation and because of the way she was marketed. And people just thought she could do better and she could have done better. And when men feel like... But also understand, sometimes the grass is not always green on the other side. You know what I'm saying? There's still time whenever you guys are still together, they, you guys can definitely still mature at times. But some people actually choose not to mature during those relationships, relationships and during those relationship errors. Was our best actually learned in this? You know what I'm saying? But again, we don't thoroughly know behind the scenes of what's really going on. All you're hearing that's up in these videos are mainly speculation, right? And just because you're worried about all this social status and all this worry about the noise and like what other people mainly think all the time, where I didn't focus on the two of y'all and having like the mentality of two of y'all against the world, and it's like us against the world being the team. That's why a lot of relationships start deteriorating because you let people, let you let other people, you letting other other people in the outside noise, literally in your business. You know what I'm saying? I get it. You want to try and make sure everything is fully guided to a point, and you got to have like some very, very, very sound judgment and responsible judgment when thoroughly vetting people, which I thoroughly agree, whether it's a man or a woman. But when you let people come in, actually coming up in your ear too much, right? And y'all built trust over time. Y'all had took some years to develop. Y'all didn't do all that love bombing shit. Y'all really actually trying to spit up all the pace. Y'all took things naturally. Y'all let things flow. And when y'all could be people actually come out up here. And let them come up in your noise. Just because they do not like you with that person. And sometimes some people they may be salty of you actually being with that particular person. That they may want behind the scenes too. You know what I'm saying? Which is why you can't actually let outside noise really get too much up in your business like that. They can't successfully prove that they are good enough for a woman in the eyes of other people when they don't feel worthy of that woman. They will do things to bring that woman down a notch. And That's a narcissist for you. And in Chrissy's case, yes, what she's describing is actually narcissistic behavior. But that does not mean all men are narcissistic. All right, there are some men that actually had that type of mindset. They had that borderline narcissistic disorder. There are some people, some men that actually are deeply insecure and everything else, just because they don't know how to actually improve on their social skills or feel like they can't get nobody else but that particular woman, and they're afraid that they're going, they're going to lose her. 
And if he does choose to walk away, whenever you see, like, fellas, whenever you see a woman choose to walk away, even though you're doing all the stuff, all this, all the best you can as you be a responsible individual, let her walk. Because at the end of the day, it's a reflection of her. And then the way she do, way she does it, if she tries to block you unexpectedly, if she tries to flick on you, it's literally a reflection of her at the end of the day, not you. You dodge the bullet. But what Chris is describing is basically a narcissistic man that wants to leech off of your misery, off of a woman's misery, because they fear that if a woman literally tries to elevate herself over him or anything like that, based on her her career, he feels like it's going to be the death of him. That's why you got to be sabotaging her steps and her accomplishments every step of the way, which is true. She's describing that of a narcissist, but I can personally tell you not all men are that way. There's a small portion or at least a good portion of narcissistic people literally up in this world, which is absolutely true, but not all men, not all women are that way. And I can guarantee you that. You just need to know, you have to literally have to learn how to practice your vetting skills and you have to know how to sniff those cues and literally take things slow and not get sucked now all the way up into pace and all in their own pace and literally trying to kiss ass to that particular person. And that includes getting her pregnant, tarnishing or ruining her reputation. But also make sure she also wanted to have the baby because that's her choice actually getting herself pregnant in the first place. Um, Hallie, Hallie here. Um, due to the fact that she got every opportunity to terminate or abort that kid. But during the nine months, she chose not to. So both DDG and Hallie share that responsibility actually bringing that child up in the world. It's both of their collective faults at the end of the day. Publicly oversharing about their love and sex life, etc. And I want to make it clear, Hallie will be fine. She will definitely be able to come back from this. I think both of them will be fine as long as they both mature and as long as they improve their emotional intelligence. And know how to actually mature and actually actually um, teach like their young son or the young kid as he or she grows up the errors that they waste. If they further mature down the road and actually go into good paths and make some smart business moves, you know, they could be a force to reckon with individually for years to come. Both of them can be successful and both of them can mature. The question is, do they want to? But this is a message for the everyday women out there who will not be able to bounce back as fast as Hallie if they follow her path. Yeah, due to the fact that both of them have a lot of money and a lot of women mainly don't, a lot of men mainly don't. I'm just using her as an example here because there are mm. a lot of everyday men like DDG who don't have his money, who don't have his status. And many of you everyday women, and especially black women, you're dealing with those men. And because you're not Hallie and you don't have her money, you don't have her social status, you won't be able to bounce back as quickly as she can. So when listening to this video, don't focus so much on them being celebrities. Focus on how Hallie is a role model. Whether she likes it or not, she's influencing millions of young black girls. And a lot of you... And a lot of celebrities are role models, by the way. Everyday women are experiencing what she is just on a micro level. Some of you are successful, educated women who have a good reputation and you're dealing with a man who is jealous of your success. And so they're trying to bring you down a notch because they can't. And those are narcissistic men. And that's some cases too, which you know, we're not disagreeing on that part. Not all of that way can't quite reach your level of social status and overall standing in society. They may be publicly embarrassing you or telling your business online or to the wrong people. They may be competing with you. Yeah, they're very immature at that point. Very, very immature. You in some way. They may always try to humble you in front of other people or even sabotage you professionally in extreme cases. This can show up in so many different ways. So ladies, if you care about your reputation and social standing, you need to look out for these things when dating men and you need to ask yourself, what will the condition of my reputation and social standing be if I were to break up with this man? Will it be the same as it was before him or worse? If it's worse, then you shouldn't move forward with that man. This is all part of the vetting process. I know we sit up here and say that men can't be vetted, but they absolutely can. And by the Anybody can be vetted. Anybody can be vetted. You know, anybody can be vetted. Literally for sure. It's a matter of actually trying to make sure that person is actually mature and respectful to actually be in a relationship and not make sure that no one no one mainly disrespects you and you don't disrespect him way you can get my series on how to vet men on my website christyonline.com if you're interested because yeah you got all these pseudo 
red pill feminist gurus and these femininity gurus, pseudo feminine gurus, these and all them courses and everything else. This try your narrative. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. Because I go into great detail on how to bet men in that series. All of this could have been avoided. DDG was showing Hallie who he was way before that baby came. And I at least wish she was able to walk away with less baggage. And, you know, I'm not saying that it's fair or that it should mm. be this way. But men usually don't have to worry about their reputation taking a hit like women do. They also are usually able to move on quicker from relationships, whether they have a baby or not. Some men do, some men don't. In other cases, some women do move on relationships, relationships quickly and other women don't. Not a one-size-fits-all thing. DDG actually gained more from being with Hallie than she gained being with him. She got the baby she wanted, but she still lost way more than he did socially. And I think that's so unfortunate because she really didn't get a chance to milk the good girl archetype mm. as long as she could have. And unfortunately, we see this way too often with successful black women. We see them allowing these men that they date or that they marry or procreate with negatively affecting the trajectory of their careers, their entire lives. We see them taking these women on detours that could have been completely avoided and way too often these successful and accomplished black women whether they are everyday black women or celebrity black women they're allowing these unworthy men to tarnish their image and destroy and that comes from a lack of now nah, this comes from naivety and lack of maturity and it happens basically when they're actually very young in some cases you know but again you know as, as they mature you know, you won't, definitely won't be able to make that same mistake as they mature in this. Verse or damage what they've worked so hard to get, whether that be social status, networks and connections with beneficial people, money. Rep and I believe both of them can still bounce back from this as long as they learn, as long as they try to utilize the advance and actually like teach people the errors of their ways, which will definitely learn in due time reputation, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going to risk allowing a man to permanently stain or damage your image and reputation, it needs to be a man who is equal to you both socially and financially. So you do not lose. Now, in, in their mind, like what would be equal to that particular woman, whether it's like socially, financially or both, you know, how would that particular woman view that? Because each and every woman has their own different views on like how they see that particular man as her equal in some ways when it comes to accomplishments or when it comes to social skills. And it can vary from woman to woman. You know what I'm saying? As much if it doesn't work out. And at the very least, to make him marry. So basically, according to Chrissy, you know, that man has to be a celebrity or he has to be a millionaire just like her. Or he's got to have the same amount of followers that actually she has. Which in a lot of cases, given the practical standpoint, it's not realistic for a lot of men that she's looking to date on the dating market. Which practically does not make any sense in the real world. In the real world, all that matters, maturity and emotional intelligence, as I stated before. You so you don't have to carry the stigma of being a single mother. If you're going to take a risk with a man, period, because be clear, they all come with risks. So if you're going to take that risk at the very least, Everybody comes to risk. Please make sure you are benefiting as much as you possibly can, both socially and financially. Make sure you're gaining and not losing from the relationship and getting. And notice what Chrissy's actually discussing when it talks about you got to get somebody who's going to get you with socially, financially. They're focusing more on the materialistic stuff rather than actually focusing on a guy's character, on a guy's maturity, on a guy's structure. On a guy's emotional intelligence, more so they focus more on finances and social status, more than that guy's actual maturity and that guy's actual emotional intelligence. Because there are men that do have that type of status, They're actually very high standing celebrity wise and very high finances, but they have very, very seedy characters behind the scenes the best social and financial deal possible because in this society women always have more to lose now with all of that said i don't believe and notice whenever they actually say things when they gender it's women always have more to lose and was like the pseudo red post mainly saying hey you know women are out here trying to take yourself when have way more to lose and women have more to gain y'all seeing like the same sub play out on like the female version of the red pill literally
even perpetually dragging women for making bad romantic choices. We've all done it. Yeah, man. None of us are perfect. Fuck out of here. It's more so for the younger women who have the opportunity to avoid situations like this and make a better choice. A lot of younger women don't realize the potential long-term consequences and lifelong impact these decisions have. And that's because they aren't being taught by the women in their lives about the importance of reputation and avoiding men who bring you down socially and financially. This is... I understand where Chrissy's trying to go, but again, it's not the socially and financially part. It's the maturity part. You need to get with somebody that's of character. That's the wrong way to go. That's the wrong way to actually guide women in that space. You want to make sure that man is of high character rather than anything else. And yes, you know, you want to make sure that a guy has a decent job. You know, you want to make sure that guy's not a bum. That's absolutely true. I fully agree with that. But, you know, saying that he got to be a millionaire or he's got to have like millions of followers, not many men have that type of cred or that had type, that type, type of fame or luxury of money that DDG has, which is not practical. That's why you need to actually focus on a man's character more than a man's material shit primarily for the younger women who just don't know so ladies down in the comments please share the very all right we done with this you know what i'm saying this is is again you know we're gonna actually try to um sum this up here because this is some similar stuff that mine has mainly stated but on the female side and we are gonna get to like a big conclusion in regards to all of this and this is literally despicable so what can we learn in all of this? Um, basically, you know, like both of both, you know, the pseudo red pill and like the pseudo feminists and pseudo feminine coaches, you know, they mindsets the same and like opposite side of the spectrum. They want you to focus more on materialistic stuff rather than actually focusing on the inner and the character of a person rather than focus on someone's emotional maturity. They try to correlate social status and finances that's equitable to emotional maturity, and that is not fully the case in a lot of cases. You know, if you have more emotional maturity and you haven't actually learned these things yet, and once you start building the money, and you learn actually how to get these things, and you learn how to treat people respectfully, it could be possible, but other folks could have like so much trauma behind the scenes, or they could be extremely arrogant, as you try to get to the top, they could be little opportunists earning all this money, thinking that they could have all this class on the outside, but behind the scenes, they're literally, literally hardcore fuck faces, literally down to the T. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, I was literally full. Please forgive me. So it's not a one size fits all thing. The most important thing that you need to focus on is get to somebody that has great character. And has great emotional intelligence and someone that's not going to belittle you. Someone that's not going to disrespect you. You know what I'm saying? That's the real, the real moral story. And from what I can see with DDG and Hallie, yes, they got together very young. Yes, you know, Hallie had a Juno moment, you know, basically DDG marked his territory and everything else, you know, around the time. We don't know if they planned the baby. We don't know if the pregnancy was accidental around the time. We have no idea. We don't know all the behind the scenes on how that impact they listened, why they fell apart. We don't know if it took place during Holly's pregnancy or right after at the moment. Maybe the other situation may, may have caused this. We don't fully know for sure until we get confirmation from both of them. Maybe if you don't get full confirmation from both of them, at least get an understanding what both sides are story and what their reasons behind it when it came to that. Um, so, as I can basically say on that, I would say give give the whole world some time, give some folks some time, and let the story mainly play itself out. You know, when cooler heads may prevail, you know they'll definitely have more of like a thorough reason as to why you know <sighs> they mainly broke apart. So. There's a lot to actually unpack in this story. I don't want to try and give away too much speculation with DDG and Hallie. All I will say to the both of them, definitely do whatever you can to actually make sure you do everything right and literally prepare for the benefit of your child. Make sure you create an environment that's not only just you can thrive in, but you can try and use yourself as a role model 
all right, to make sure that your child is actually living good and also act in a positive manner, act with decorum, act with respect. Show your child that example. You know what I'm saying? Even if you guys don't even work out, make sure you guys are definitely there and are present for your child. Make sure you're involved in that child's life. You know what I'm saying? That's really the most important part. Um, I do wish DDG and Hallie all the best in their future endeavors on what they plan to do moving forward. I think both of them can improve. I think both of them can bounce back with the social stuff for nasty having may be. But irrespective of all that, the most important thing is to make sure they develop maturely. They have a, develop a much better and a much higher emotional intelligence than what they had before. And I'm going to leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, also, notes, I got like so much stuff they really want to post up. So, bear with me. There's going to be like a bunch of content that we post up that's going to be flash content that I'm going to be posting up in long form. Literally over, over the weeks and months ahead around the time of this recording. <laughs> because there's so much stuff that I really want to go over. I'm just actually trying to take my time due to the fact that I'm dealing with a full-time job and a long commute. So it's definitely going to take me a while. Just please, please bear with me in regards to that. I'll make sure I get that stuff out. i make sure I'll be able to actually thoroughly edit the content and thoroughly edit the description as best as I can. So you'll be able to have a feel of what's going on. From the vlogs I did on my vacation to a situation, you know, where you got like a young black teen that was followed by like some demonic cowards. You know, thing is they good neighborhood, demonic white cowards at that. And one of them really want to try and show off and act all big, tuck and bad, bring up his gun to that target a child. I'm going to get in that story as well, too. All right. So let me go pass on next to go to bed. Chris and Paul from their Chronicles is signing out. Deuces.